ladies and gentlemen, if you have not heard this news, um, you really need to buckle up for this one. So it was just a day or two ago that Joe Biden had announced that Ukraine has his permission to use long range missiles. You can see that here in this article by the New York Times, Biden allows Ukraine to strike Russia with long range US missiles. Now I wanna tell you why this is very concerning. Number one, obviously this is going to escalate the war, right? Which is what we do not want to happen. We want this war to end. We do not want an escalation. Number two, Long range missiles are very problematic and I want to explain why. Number one, it is harder for you to hit the target, which means there's more likely to be more casualties using long range uh, missiles. Uh, this is a no, no. Vladimir Putin was very clear that if this did happen, he would consider this uh, a war, not only against Ukraine, but against the West as well. Thus, escalating us into world war three. Now I find it interesting that all of this is starting to happen. Uh, just as Biden is about to leave office, it's now November. He doesn't have that much time left as president of the United States. So it almost kind of seemed like to me that Biden is trying to escalate this war because this is one war in particular where Donald Trump has been vocal about that. He wants to make sure that this ends on day one. He's already reached out to Zelensky. We'll have to wait and see if that actually happens, but why would you try to escalate things on your way out? The threat of nuclear war has now never been more real. Zelensky spoke out about this. He's actually very happy that Joe Biden gave him permission to use long range missiles in Russia. Listen to what he says here. President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine says actions will speak louder than words. Today, there's a lot of talk in the media about us receiving permission for respective actions, but strikes are not carried out with words. Such things are not announced. Missiles will speak for themselves. They certainly will. So that you heard that there from Zelensky, he's saying that the missiles will speak for themselves. Never wanted to end this war. He wants to continue to escalate it. Like I said, it's obvious they cannot beat Russia. This is just causing more death. And for people who care about Ukrainians, the number of people who say, what about the Ukrainians? Ukrainians are continuing to die. I mean, the average age of soldiers that are being enlisted in the Ukrainian armies, they're like in their 40s. I think it's like 45, 46 years old. They're running out of men. And this has been happening for quite some time. Now, Scott Ritter, I want to remind you, warned everybody about this. He warned everybody about what would happen if this was not brought to an end, that Joe Biden would try to escalate this war again. They are answering to the military industrial complex. He is not answering to the needs of the people. Uh, the president of the United States does not care about those Ukrainian people. He doesn't care about the Russian people. He is working for the war machine. Scott Ritter was recently on uh, George Galloway's show. Please check out Moats TV if you haven't. George Galloway runs a pretty based show over there. After this was announced from Joe Biden, and I want you to hear what Scott Ritter had to say about this. Atlantic Ocean and not worry about the conflict spilling over. They are wrong. War will come to America. War will come in the form of Russian nuclear weapons and American cities will be destroyed. So why did biden do this at this time there's only there's only one reason he was told by his intelligence officials that russia is bluffing that russia will do nothing that this is the time to escalate because russia is banking on um you know trump coming in and changing the calculus uh and so biden is seeking to firm up the algorithm of war, of confrontation, of escalation before Trump comes in. I believe that Biden is sadly mistaken. Let me go back a little bit because I needed to start this at 58 seconds. Sorry about that, guys. Because you missed the first part. Here Point we go. Out the fact that um, 
if he doesn't know it, that's because his brain has ceased working. And that may be a possibility. Uh, but he knew on September 13th and 14th that when he last was confronted with this decision and opted not to give permission, what the consequences would be. Uh, Russia made it very clear that yep. for the United States to give Ukraine permission to use American-provided long-range missiles to strike targets inside Russia, that is an act of war. An act of war, meaning that we would too then be at war with Russia. This is very serious, you guys. And for the people who tell me that foreign policy is not important, I want to ask you this question. Do you have children? Are any of those children um, under the age of 18? But at some point they will be 18. What if they're 17? What if they're 16? Because you know what's about to happen, right? You know that Congress, I covered this a while back, that they're trying to pass legislation basically to make, to reinstall the draft, to make it so that as soon as they turn 18, these kids are automatically registered for the draft. So even though you may say you don't care about foreign policy, if you have children, I think that you should care about foreign policy because it could be your kids that are sent overseas to fight these wars and to kill innocent people. The war machine must come to an end. It must go. And Scott Ritter, again, not perfect, but Scott Ritter has been warning people about this for years. He told you what would happen. He told you what would come. And Joe Biden just has to, on his way out, let's try to escalate things with Russia. And I would argue, considering that Joe Biden is experiencing cognitive decline, he should not be making foreign policy decisions right now. That should be taken away from him. This is a mess. That America becomes an active participant to the conflict and Russia will treat America in this way. Anatoly Antonov, the former Russian ambassador to the United States, uh, drove this point home when he told uh, former U.S. government officials who called him at the behest of the Biden administration uh, that the consequences will not be limited to Europe. If the United States believes that it can hide behind the Atlantic Ocean and not worry about the conflict spilling over, they are wrong. War will come to America. War will come in the form of Russian nuclear weapons and American cities will be destroyed. So why did Biden do this at this time? There's only, there's only one reason. He was told by his intelligence officials that Russia is bluffing, that Russia will do nothing that this is the time to escalate because Russia is banking on, um, you know, Trump coming in and changing the calculus. Uh, and so Biden is seeking to firm up the algorithm of war, of confrontation, of escalation before Trump comes in. I believe that Biden is sadly mistaken and that we will see a Russian reaction. And yep. here's the irony of it all. The only hope the world has now is that Donald Trump sends a signal that he will not allow this escalation to stand, that when he becomes president, this all comes to an end, therefore giving Russia the chance to limit its response so that it could be peace. Otherwise, Russia will respond, and I believe that we are going to immediately find ourselves in a cycle of violence could, that could very well lead to nuclear war. This is what I was warning everybody about in the lead up to the election. Yeah. Um, he continued to try to tell people about this. I will I will give him that. Uh, Scott Ritter has been on the show a number of times. I will give him that. He has continued to try to warn people and to educate people. Well... And there's a reason for that, because this morning, as of today, Ukraine took that, you know, go ahead from Joe Biden, and they did fire long range missiles into Russia. This is not a game. None of this other stuff matters. Meg the Stallion twerking does not matter. It doesn't matter how many celebrities Kamala can bring to a rally. None of that matters. If we are at risk for a nuclear war, you can see it now. This was posted earlier this morning. 
CNN was talking about it. U Ukraine fires U.S. made longer range missiles into Russia. Again, I told you with the longer range missiles, the problem that you run into again is that it is not as easy to see the target. This is a big, big escalation. Let's get into I think this. We are now going to have to see whether Ukraine steps forward and officially acknowledges that this indeed was an attack and missile launching this particular strike uh, just in the last 48 hours. President Volodymyr Zelensky has sort of hedged that generally saying, look, we're not going to necessarily announce this. Missiles will speak for themselves. Well, certainly that news has indeed emerged. What could Russia's response be? They have been unclear at this particular point, previously warning uh, that if these missiles were fired by Ukraine, supplied as they are by the United States, uh, that that would essentially be NATO, the US and Europe joining the war, becoming a party to the conflict. Putin has not reiterated that himself since this, but indeed his foreign ministry made similar noises. So it's a key moment here, certainly, and it's one important to phrase it here, Amaret. We're seeing the Trump presidency loom, the likelihood of negotiations there, European allies maneuvering, showing the fact they're not on the the same page, frankly, as Olaf Scholz, the lame duck chancellor of Germany, made a call to the Kremlin head uh, on Friday. <clears throat> that notion of diplomacy is clear uh, and coming down the track. And so I think we're seeing the Biden administration giving this permission to use the attackums to potentially complicate uh, the war that President Trump, President elect Trump, inherits. And I think. Yes, to complicate the war. This is all intentional. Now, this war has been going on for a couple of years now, so this could have happened at any time. Biden is doing it at this time because they did not win, because Kamala Harris did not win. So you have to, there has to be something seriously wrong with you that you would try to get back at the opponent by escalating a war. There has to be something seriously wrong with you. And the military industrial complex is a big part of this. This is all about money. Remember what I told you, peace doesn't make money. Wars make money for the weapon contractors. That's how they make money. You don't have any wars. They start laying people off. I just, the fact that now, Russia would see this as a war, no longer just with Ukraine, but also with NATO and the US, the NATO West alike. What has Joe Biden just done? What have they done? Everyone's saying, well, Trump said he wants to end the war. Guys, it's November 19th. A lot can happen from now until January with this conflict. We don't know what else Joe Biden is going to do. Zelensky walks into the White House and he walks out with a blank check. When it has been very clear since day one that Ukraine cannot win this war again, the goal is not to win. The goal is to destabilize Russia and to try to bankrupt Russia. That is the goal. Julian Assange warned us about these wars uh, quite a time ago. I think it was a couple of years ago where he made the statement where he said that again, the goal is not about winning. The goal is about having these never ending wars. Thus you create this type of money laundering uh, system through the military industrial complex. That's all this is. And innocent people die as a result. They're not trying to win. They know Ukraine can't win. Joe Biden, that they know Ukraine can't win. Get out of here. This is all about money. Also give Ukraine a chance on the battlefield to get the upper hand. Remember, they're very worried, the Americans, about North Korean troops and a Russian offensive into that Kursk area where Ukrainian troops are currently occupying part of it. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a, a remarkable series of events, starting with President Biden um, with this major change in policy, allowing Ukraine to use these longer range missiles inside Russia. 
And then what we saw was Putin signing this declaration, uh, revising the nuclear doctrine that you mentioned that would um, it basically declared that a conventional attack on Russia by any nation supported by a nuclear power would be considered a joint attack. And then we see uh, Ukraine using these long range missiles. Uh, we, it's yet to be seen yeah. what Russia's response will be. But this would obviously be seen as uh, quite an escalation by Moscow. This would be seen as World War Three. And let's not forget China, there's China, there's North Korea, and there's Iran. And they are definitely not on the side of NATO. And they're definitely not on the side of the United States. So who do you think they're going to back? Russia. This is Joe Biden trying to push us into World War III. Now, at this point, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican or if you're independent, et cetera. At this point, if you had frustration and anger towards George W. Bush during the Iraq war, you should have that same feeling towards Joe Biden with the Ukraine war towards Israel and Gaza right now, regardless of party affiliation, regardless, because at this point, you know, back then everybody, it was easier to say the Republicans are warmongers. Look at what they're doing. It was easier to say that back then, but now, are you saying that about the Democratic Party? Are you saying that, oh my God, the Democratic Party of warmongers, look at what they're doing. How in the world did we have two new conflicts under Joe Biden's presidency, under Biden-Harris administration, Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank, and Lebanon? How does this happen? This is who Joe Biden always was. Never met a war that he did not like. See, now people are starting to see it wasn't just Republicans that were okay in those wars. Now people are starting to see that some of those Democrat politicians, some of those senators, some of those Democrat senators and congressmen also are pro-war because they take money from the military industrial complex. This is a dangerous game that we do not want to play. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to war with Russia. Something to think about, folks. It's crazy times out here. I just can't tell you. I, we've said this over and over again. And the number of times people are like, no, we don't want to hear about foreign policy. It doesn't really matter. Yes, it does matter. It does impact you. It does affect you. Hey, guys, this was a savvy clip. If you like what you saw, hit that like button and subscribe.